So, what are we gonna vlog today? Well, just up here is my pain cave. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the topic of the day. We see these things popping up everywhere. If you go to any dedicated YouTube channel around triathlon or cycling or you visit Facebook posts or groups, you're going to see posts around people's pain caves and what they've developed at home. Hopefully you know what I mean by these, but if not, let me explain. So what do we mean by a pain cave? Okay, you put these words into Google and you're going to see a complete mix of creations that people have done at home. You'll have big ones, small ones, inside, out, you know, makeshift garages, dedicated rooms, minimalist to full equipment gyms. The list goes on. Now you see what I mean. By definition, I suppose what we can really call this is a, a space or an area with some dedicated equipment in that allows us to carry out our training. And whether you're a runner, a cyclist, a triathlete, your equipment might differ, but ultimately, this is a place really to get the hard work done. The pain cave, I believe, is so much more. You know, it's where character's built and the hard work happens. It's that same place where that hard work even makes or breaks you. But as triathletes or runners or cyclists, you will find that there are certain workouts that we need to do. Now, trying to do those on those busy streets, particularly here in London, is nigh on impossible. What, my friends, makes a great pain cave? Well, I suppose it depends on the type of athlete that you are and what the equipment is that you need within it. I'm going to take you on a little tour of mine. I'm actually standing you know, within it at the moment and you've probably seen clips of it on my Insta posts and you know from previous blog posts, but hopefully this will give you the full tour, the full breakdown, rundown of all the things that I have inside my pain cave. So guys, I'm just at the top of my stairs and as you can see behind me, just here, is my pain cave. Now, I'm gonna take you on a tour of that um, and I think the first thing to really consider is the size. Now, this is actually our smallest bedroom uh, in the house. It probably is no bigger than eight or nine square meters. It probably, the size wise, is probably two and a half by about three and a half meters in length. Um, and I'll try and give you some perspective of size if I give you a little aerial shot. So here we go. You can see this. Now, I don't have the luxury of having all my equipment set out. Okay, so if I want to use particular things, I might have to fold up my treadmill or take my bike out. And you'll see what I mean as I take you through this. The other thing to consider is that this room has evolved over time. You know, when I first started off, I didn't have all the equipment in that I have now. So it, you know, it develops over time. It gets better. You add to it. You see what works, what doesn't. You change things. So I think the first thing to start with is the floor. Now, you might have seen a black floor I thought that's pretty striking well actually it's a rubber floor it's sort of rubber tiles that clip together and this was the first thing that I did when I set this room up knowing that I wanted something under me that had um, a little bit of grip but also could take you know some of the the bounce out of the room I suppose and it's been a real good um, investment I suppose and it's not the cheapest thing you can buy but it has um, given me what I need let's move on to the bike trainer now the trainer that I use is a Tax Neo and it is a first edition one. So it's just here, that's that baby. And that's obviously connected to my bike and there's a PC just here behind it next to it on the, just by the wall. 
and there's a lead that runs from that PC all the way under the floor up to the TV that you can see behind me on the wall. Now, the as I said before, the, the trainer is so important because it allows me to do all those specific workouts, the FTP workouts, you know, the muscular force ones, any sprints, the ones that are really difficult to do on the road. And I, I couldn't be without it, to be honest. And moving on to the bike, you would have seen that my triathlon bike, my race bike, the one that I do battle with, the bike that I actually hand built from scratch. And you will find a blog post on that. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, and that will give you details of what I did with that. But this is the one that stays attached to my, my trainer. Uh, it's the one that I do most of my training on. You know, part of that reason is this aero tuck position. You will be surprised by not going in this position, how much it hurts when you return to it. So I like to try in the off season, keep in that aero tucked position, which is why I do most of my training on this bike. This bike also stays out most of the time. The only time that it will get moved or taken off the trainer is if I want to do any of the weights work, which you'll see behind me. Let's move on to those. So here you can see the weight section, the strength area. And this is my weight bench, which folds up into the corner. Uh, you've got a load of free weights um, and there's a barbell behind. And this was a custom thing that I built uh, a year or two ago and I changed the room around again. But actually, uh, if I wanna use this, I have to unclip the bike, take the bike outside. Uh, the treadmill also folds up and then I've got the space, well, the whole floor in which I can carry out the strength exercises. And speaking of the treadmill, yeah, this one. Uh, this is the latest addition to the room. You know, I bought this in, I think it was November 2019. So, you know, I've had it a, f a fair few months now. And I've got to say, I'm really, really impressed with it. You know, it's got some really good top speeds. I think you can do a 5K in about 16 minutes on it. Not that I can do that. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it can hit the speeds. And one of the other criteria that when I researched this and bought it was that it had to fold. Knowing the size of my room, knowing that I wanted to do the uh, strength workouts, the treadmill had to be, had to fold to give me the room to be able to do that. And I'm really impressed with it. You know, it's by a German company, um, Sports Tech, and I've purchased stuff from them before. And if you can see behind me, you'll see my pull-up bar. It's by the same company. And I, when I bought this, again, I didn't want to use one of those flimsy door sort of pull-up bars. I'd used those before. I wasn't that impressed with them. This is a really solid bit of kit. It's bolted to the wall. You know, you've got variations in your hand grips and positions of your hands so you can vary the exercise. But as I said, uh, Sports Tech, really good company. Check them out. They're on Amazon. They, you know, I'm not sponsored by them, so <laughs> I'm not trying to um, get anything through them. I'm not affiliated. So, yeah, go, go check them out. There are also some other essentials that I have in this room that you may have noticed uh, when I've been sort of showing it around. And one of those you can sort of see here in the corner is my amp. And that again is attached to the computer, um, which allows me to run things like Spotify, uh, listen to the radio, CDs, and trust me, you need distraction when you're doing some of these workouts in here. Uh, another essential is a fan. You must have a fan in a pain cave. You know, the amount of sweating you do, um, particularly on the bike training, you get really, really hot. Um, you need a fan to keep you cool. It keeps the heart rate down as well. My fan, just up there on the wall. And it's it's oscillating, it's stationary, it's also remote controlled, meaning, you know, I can flick speeds when I'm on the bike. And it's quite useful. One other thing that you may have noticed is my shelving rack behind me on the wall. And this is something that I made again. In fact, it was a CD rack. And I just cut it in half and put some, put those on the wall and put some shelving in between it, uh, just with some off cuts of wood that I had hanging about. But again, yeah, it, it just holds little little bits and pieces and essentials that I have. 
uh, that I need in the room. One other thing that I think is really important, which people often overlook, is their internet connection. When I put this room together and I laid the floor, one thing I considered was putting in a wired network port. And do you know what? It's been probably the best decision I made. I do not have any dropouts in internet connectivity. You know, it's flawless. Um, I'll show you that now. It's just down here. You can sort of see here are the network points. And I put some additional plugs in. And like I say, when I do this in France and I, uh, I get to put the gym together there, it's certainly one of the things that I'm going to do because it's so reliable. Um, I don't have to rely on my Wi-Fi. And at this particular time, it drops out a lot, you've probably noticed. So guys, there you have it. There's my pain cave. I hope you enjoyed today's tour. Uh, like I said, it's not the biggest, but it's functional. It you know does everything that I need. I've shown you today that I can have the trainer and the treadmill out together. But if I want to do the strength workouts, you know, the treadmill needs folding, the bike trainer needs coming out. My advice, if you're thinking about doing one of these in your house or outside in a shed or a garage or something like that, is do your calculations. There is nothing worse than a cramped or unusable room. You know, make sure your, your equipment fits. You know, mock things up. Um, the, the, I think the key thing to remember about a training room is functionality. You know, functional, not fancy. All I've got to say now is a big thank you for watching the video. You know, I do appreciate it. It'd be great to see some thumbs up in there. If you've got any comments, suggestions or thoughts, do stick them in the comments box below. It'd be good to hear from you. Uh, and like I say, if you want to see more of this, do subscribe and I'll see you next time.